Come in. Welcome. Nice to have you with us again here in this vault of vampires, this haven of horrors, this mansion of mystery. For within these halls today, we're going to share an experience of chilling proportions. That of babysitting. Now, I don't really mean babysitting, since our young charge is 12 years old, hardly a baby. But you know what I mean. Taking care of a 12-year-old can be more trying than taking care of an infant. Particularly such a child as this. Our mystery drama, You're Going to Like Rodney, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Bob Juran and stars Tony Roberts and Patricia Elliott. It's sometimes difficult for childless couples to put up with the activity of youth. They lead a life where everything is orderly and comfortable. The intrusion of a child, even for a visit, can upset the harmony of their settled lives. So it was with a certain amount of concern, and yet a feeling of compassion, that June and Ed Carpenter in San Diego, California, read the letter that arrived from Edgar's brother, George, a New York attorney. Uh, Helen and I are asking a favor. Uh, for the past two weeks, we've been caring for a young boy of 12. A tragic case. His parents were killed in an automobile crash last month. He's been living with his grandmother, a neighbor of ours, and only two weeks ago, she died from a fall. We're taking care of him until I can settle things. He seems to have no one else. Oh, what a trial for the child. It certainly is. Uh, we're asking if you and June could possibly take care of him for us the second week in July. Uh, we're committed to attending the International Bar Association Convention in Switzerland and can't take him with us. I realize you've not had much experience with children, but being my blood brother does create a bond of sympathy. <laughs> Rodney is a special child, and I think you and June could give him the care he needs while we're away. It's only for a week. I wonder what he means by special. Hmm. Bright, probably. He finishes, uh, it will be a great personal favor to Helen and me, and I know the best for Rodney. Let's hear from you. Affectionately, George. Well, what do you think? Well, there's no one around you for Rodney to play with. He'll be terribly bored. Well, July's our slowest month at the office. I mean, I could take more time off. I could take him to some Padres games, uh, the zoo, the beach. I really feel we should help. Of course. We can keep him amused. I don't think it'll be too bad. Agree? Yes. And Mrs. Nathanson will probably come in to sit when we go to the club. She's always talking about her grandchildren. Well, then I'll tell George we'll take Rodney. We may even get to like him. Oh, you're going to like Rodney, Ed. You can't imagine how much Helen and I appreciate it. Well, we're glad to do it, George. Uh... Listen, you said Rodney was a special child. What's he like? What does he like to do? Well, he's sort of the quiet type, you know. Hasn't been much trouble for us. We'll keep him indefinitely until I can settle things with the estate. Uh, there don't seem to be any other relatives. It's strange. You said his parents died in a car accident. Yeah, and I've tried to locate other family members, but there just don't seem to be any. His grandmother was apparently the only one. Who took him to her when the parents died? I can't learn that either. I was in touch with some of the neighbors in New Hampshire where his parents lived, but apparently they'd moved in only a few weeks before the accident, and no one knew anything about them. Well, the poor kid has had a time of it. We'll take good care of him here. We'll put Rodney on a plane to San Diego, and you can meet him at the airport, okay? Okay. We'll be ready. Thanks a million, Ed. I know you're going to like Rodney. Oh, I wish we'd left earlier. The plane's in already. Oh, so the kid will wait. It may upset him not to find us there. Look, look we're in time. Uh, they haven't opened the gate yet. Oh, I'm glad George sent a picture of him. At least we know who to look for. <laughs> well, there probably aren't many 12-year-olds traveling alone on this flight. We'll spot them. Oh, here they come now. Hey, there he is. Rodney! 
Rodney? <laughs> here we are. Oh, he sees us. <laughs> Over here. He, he's a lot smaller than I expected. He looks awfully frail. Hi, Rodney. I'm uh, Uncle Edgar, and this is Aunt June. How was the flight? Fun? Would you like a cold drink or, or something before we start home? Well, at least he shook his head no. He's probably terrified from the long trip alone, and we're total strangers to him. Well, <laughs> when he sees his room and the swimming pool, he'll brighten up, won't you, Rodney? Well, <sighs> shall we go home? He's uh, still in his room? Yes. I'm really uneasy, Ed. He, he just won't say a word. While I was unpacking his things, I chatted and asked him questions, but he doesn't speak. And there was one suitcase he, he wouldn't let me touch. Well, I, I wouldn't worry yet. I, he's only been here a few hours. George said he's the quiet type. Give him a chance to get used to us. Quiet is right. <laughs> Completely quiet. Listen, there can't be anything serious. I mean, George would have told us if he had a problem. He's certainly not autistic. No, he responds all right. He nodded yes and no. He shrugged. <laughs> he just won't speak. I, I think I hear him in the kitchen. I'll get him out here and into the pool. Hey, Rodney. Come on out. Oh, you've got your suit on already. W would you like to swim? <laughs> Last one in is a rotten egg. <laughs> <laughs> come, on, come on in. Oh, go on in, Rodney. You you can swim, can't you? Yeah, at a boy. Come on. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> and get up on my shoulders now. I'll toss you. Oh. That's it. <clears throat> You're a strong little devil, aren't you? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ed, Ed, are you all right? <laughs> Ed, Ed, what's the matter? Get off! Ed! Get off! Ed! Help! Help! I'm throwing you the live ring, darling. You have to catch it! Hold on! Hold on! Rodney, help me pull him in. Hold on, Ed. You're, all, you're almost to the side. There. Here, darling. Here, gr grab my arm. I'm okay. I'm okay. I gotta get my breath. Stretch, stretch up, darling. Face down. What was it? A, a cramp? Lord, that kid is strong. I couldn't get out from under him. What do you mean? Oh, I know it wasn't your fault, Rodney. I, I put you up on my shoulders. But, Edgar, he slipped off your shoulders. No, he didn't. He was pressing down on me. Well, there was so much splashing. I, I couldn't tell what was going on, except that you looked like you were drowning. I... I think I almost did. But he's not that heavy. He's almost scrawny, and you're 200 pounds. I, cu I couldn't get up. Edgar, <clears throat> he's gone into the house. He, he probably feels guilty. I, I tried to tell him it was my idea. Hello? A anything the matter? Oh, uh, Mrs. Nathanson. Oh, please, come in. Oh. Well... I was in my garden. I heard a commotion. Nothing serious, I hope. Well, yes, almost. Here, darling, sit down. Oh. Yeah, I was playing with Rodney and nearly drowned in the pool. Oh, dear me, how awful. Well, I'm glad to see you didn't. Oh, oh, by the way, who, who is uh, Rodney? He's a, a youngster my brother in New York took in. He, he's 12. We're looking after him for the week. Ed's brother and his wife are in Switzerland for a lawyer's conference. Oh, yes. I, I was in Switzerland in 1903 with Mr. Nathanson. Uh, how did you almost drown, Mr. Carpenter? I don't know. I was playing with the boy, and uh, and I couldn't get my breath. I couldn't get to the surface. Oh, that's curious. Your pool isn't that deep. And Rodney's not that big. Well, all's well that ends well. I'll get... Back to my roses. Oh, um, Mrs. Nathanson, mm -hmm. since you're here, I, I wonder, could we call on you to sit with Rodney well, one or two nights a week when we go to the club? Oh, but of course. I'd be delighted. 
You know, my grandson, Arthur, he's a 14-year-old. He called me the other day, all on his own, and it was Would just... Would you like some iced tea, Mrs. Nathan? Oh, no, dear, thanks. I must get back. Uh, glad it was nothing serious. Just call any time. I'll be glad to sit with Rodney. Thanks so much. Well, I'd better go in and see him. Yeah, yeah he probably feels that it was his fault. No, I'll talk to him. We've got to make him understand he's not to blame. I uh, brought you some lemonade, Rodney. I know you feel strange here, and that's understandable. You've never met us before, but please, we're your friends. Rodney, let me ask you, can you talk and just don't want to, or are we trying to make you talk when you can't? You can shake your head, yes or no. Oh, you don't want to answer. All right, Rodney. I'll tell you what. While you're with us, you can do just as you want. We won't press you. And if you feel like talking, we'll be happy to talk with you. Uh, I'm going down and start supper now. We're having steak outside. I'll call you when we're ready. Rodney, what is it? Oh, you want to write something. Oh, good. Wait. Um, let's see. There should be paper right here. Mm, yes, here, Rodney. A pad and a pencil. Oh, I'm so glad you want to say something. D take your time. If you want to communicate to us through notes, it's perfectly all right. Let's see. <gasps> Rodney, what? What a horrible thing to write. Your cat is going to die. Why should he write such a cruel thing? I, I, I thought he was going to say thank you or, or something. I, I, I was trying to be kind. Your cat is going to die. Strange, all right. Do you think he means he, he's going to try and kill her? Oh, come on. Where are you going? Going back upstairs and find out what's with this kid. Ed, please, don't upset him anymore. Well, he's getting me upset with that stony stare of his, mocking us with his silence. Look here, Rodney. What does this mean? Ed. Why? I want to know right now why you wrote this. I mean, there's the pad, and write your answer if you won't talk. Ed, wait. He's crying. Well, he's going to have more to cry about if we don't get an answer from him. Rodney, what is it? You're so unhappy. You're sorry you wrote the note, is that it? Look, he's nodding his head. Okay, okay. Take it easy, Rodney. I'm sorry I lost my temper. Rodney, get into bed, put on your pajamas, and just rest. I'll bring you a light supper later. <laughs> it's been a trying day for you. We won't bother you any more today. We'll leave you now, okay? Okay. Brother George sent us a handful. I think you should get in touch with him right away and find out if this is Rodney's usual behavior. I don't see how they could have put up with this for even a few months. No, neither do I. Uh, do you want to call him? No, let's wait. I, I can't see getting George upset on our first day. Let's give it a chance. After all, we ought to be able to deal with a 12-year-old boy. Well, maybe we were wise to wait. He's been a little better the past two days. Yeah, he's getting used to us. If only he'd talk. He hasn't even written anything since that, well, that first note. Maybe he hasn't anything to say. We do the talking, and all he has to say is yes or no. Ed, have you ever looked deeply into his eyes? No. No, not really. I have. Several times. I felt as though I were staring into a deep well. 
an abyss into nothingness. Oh, come on. Mr. Carpenter, Mrs. Carpenter. Oh, what's the matter, Mrs. Nathanson? You're all flushed. Here, here, sit down. Oh, no, that's all right. I, I don't know how to tell you. I'll just have to say it. Under my porch this morning, I found your cat, Sylvester. Dead. It seems that Rodney's prophecy came true. He told the carpenters a cat would die. But was it a prophecy, I wonder? Or did Rodney have something to do with it? He's such a strange youngster. Would he go so far as to kill an innocent little cat that belonged to people he hardly knew? I hope a similar fate doesn't await the other people in our story. We'll find out when I return shortly with Act Two. Overnight company can indeed be troublesome now and then, particularly when the company is a strange child who writes threatening notes. But then, who could be afraid of a 12-year-old child? But remember, Rodney is somewhat of a special child, an orphan whose parents were killed in an auto accident. I think we ought to have some compassion for the boy. But at the moment, the carpenters and Mrs. Nathanson are lamenting the death of the carpenter's cat. There he is. I'm so sorry. Are there any marks on him, Aunt? You don't seem to be. No. None at all. Well, he might have eaten something. He never leaves the yard. He couldn't have gotten any poisoned food. He must have died last night. I'm going to take him to the vet for an autopsy. I'm serious. I'll get a carton. I have one round back. Do you think Rodney killed Sylvester? <laughs> don't you? I don't want to think that. I'm taking Sylvester to the vet, and then I'm going to talk to that kid. I'll come with you. I don't know what to say to him now. You heard the vet. No apparent cause of death. <laughs> How could Rodney be responsible for that? Ed, we've got to stop blaming him and being suspicious of him. He needs some kindness. Maybe you're right. Well, look. What's that on the coffee table? A paper. It's his handwriting. Look at this. <gasps> I told you so. That evil little devil. Rodney? Rodney? Come down here, right now. What are we going to say to him? Plenty. <laughs> He's going to be around here for the rest of the week. He's not going to get smart with us. This has got to stop. Rodney, come over here. Right here. Rodney, I don't know what you meant by this note. You didn't kill Sylvester. And writing a note like this is cruel. Don't let me see another note like this in this house again. You understand? Look, he's going to write something. Well, good. Let's see what you have to say for yourself. He's not saying much. Two words. Well, at least we're getting something out of him. Well, what did he write? What did I just get through telling you? Ed, what are you doing? You hit him. I'll teach this. What did he write? Here. <gasps> You're next. You go to your room. Right now. No 12-year-old is going to intimidate me. Go on up, Rodney. He's a brat we're stuck with for the week, and he's not going to scare me with those threats. Ed, please, calm down. The, the child's just being belligerent. You, you're going to antagonize him even more. You're not afraid of him, are you? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> He won't open his door. We'll have to go without him, if you still want to go. Well, we'll go to the beach instead of the zoo. I got a yen for some surf fishing. If he doesn't want a good time, the heck with him. He'll be safe here alone. We'll be back in a couple of hours. Maybe I'd better stay. I don't care that much for the beach anyway, and 
Now, frankly, you deserve the relaxation. He'll be all right. Besides, I thought you were afraid of him. Not afraid. No. I think... I feel sorry for him. He seems a terribly disturbed boy. Okay. Okay, I'll go alone, if you don't mind. No, I'll pack you lunch. Maybe alone, I can get closer to Rodney. Hello? May I come over? Oh, please do, Mrs. Nathanson. Oh, well, I saw Mr. Carpenter drive off with his fishing gear. Uh, tell me, what did you learn about poor Sylvester's death? The vet couldn't say. Just no apparent cause. Oh, well, that's strange, isn't it? Oh, but it does happen, I guess. Oh, by the way, how is the young man who's staying with you? I haven't seen him at all. He's all right. He, he stays in his room a lot. Oh, well, it doesn't sound natural for a 12-year-old boy. Is something the matter with him? Well, we don't know. He, he never speaks. He, he writes the most ghastly notes. There seems to be something disturbing the child. Oh, well, what kind of notes does he write? Well, the first said our cat would die. Oh. And then he left one saying, I told you so. Oh, dear me. And then, right in front of us, he wrote, You're next. Oh. Well, maybe it's his way of attracting attention. We, we don't know anything about him. Could he have killed Sylvester? Somehow? Oh, that doesn't seem likely. What does Mr. Carpenter think? Well, he thinks Rodney's just a brat. He doesn't take his notes seriously. Oh, well, the child's certainly not going to kill anyone. He's just going through a stage. Oh, oh, excuse me. There's the phone. Oh. Stay here. I I'll be back in a minute. Yes. Uh, hello? June? I never made the beach. I'm at the hospital. W what? What are you talking about? What's the matter? Lost control of the car going over to Coronado. <gasps> it, it just wouldn't steer. It went into the water. Ed, for heaven's sake. I wanted you to know before you heard it from someone else. The car is in eight feet of water. Well, I'll, I'll be right there, darling. No, no, no. You stay where you are. Uh, the cops are going to bring me home. I'm okay. I, I got out in time. Well, hurry, then. Uh, hurry. I will. Mrs. Carpenter, what is it? You, you're shaking. That was Ed. Oh, he lost control of the car. It went into the water at Coronado. Oh, dear me, is he all right? Yes, the, the police are bringing him home. Oh, thank heaven! I don't understand it. Ed had a complete annual overhaul on the station wagon last month. Well, they would have found anything wrong with the steering. Oh, well, you'd think so. Please stay with me, Mrs. Nathanson. I, I, I'm so upset. I don't oh, want to be alone. Of course I will. Of course. Can I get you something? Oh, yes. Th there's some aspirin in the cupboard over the sink. Ah, I could use it. Oh, all right. I'll get it. Now, you sit right there. Ah, oh, this is curious. Huh. Oh, here's your aspirin. I, I found this on the kitchen table. Oh, no. It says... Missed. Uh, just the one word, missed. It's his writing. Rodney's. What does he mean, uh, missed? On top of Ed's accident. Oh, he's a fiend. Oh, but the child couldn't possibly have had anything to do with the car. I am beginning to wonder. Uh, Mrs. Carpenter, I, I think you're letting yourself get I don't get want old. Ed to see that paper. Oh, do you still have the other note? Yes. I wonder... My sister is quite good at handwriting analysis. Now, she's helped the police department several times. Perhaps if she looked at Rodney's writing, she could tell us something about his character. It's quite revealing. That is a good idea. W would she? And how is Mr. Carpenter? That accident yesterday shook him terribly. He's staying in bed today. Ah. Uh. We have to go to the club dance tonight. He's the president. We can't miss it. Oh, I wish we could cancel. Oh, now, don't worry. Everything will be fine. And don't forget, I'll be sitting with Rodney. But I really came over to tell you what my sister says about his handwriting. Oh, yes, what? Well, 
She couldn't be as thorough as she usually is because the letters are printed, not written. Yes. Of course, I didn't tell her a thing about who Rodney is. Uh, she didn't even know he was a child. What did she say? Now, this is so curious. She said she got the impression, just the feeling, mind you, that the person was a very old man. An old man? Now, she admitted it was just a feeling. But, but, but an old man? What did she say when you told her Rodney is only 12? Uh, she looked rather strange and said, I'd never have guessed it. Hi, hi. Couldn't stay in bed another minute. Oh, how are you feeling, Mr. Carpenter? Uh, shaky, but okay. Hey, those look like Rodney's notes. They are, Ed. Uh, Mrs. Nathanson's sister analyzed his handwriting. But she, she's an expert. Oh, you didn't tell me about this. Oh, well, she did it last night. I just brought them back. And what did she say? She thought that Rodney was an old man. What? Well, she couldn't tell much because the letters were printed. No. Mm -hmm. Did June uh, ask you about tonight, Mrs. Nathan? Oh, yes. Mm. I'm happy to come over. Oh, hey, I got to go downtown and see about the car. I'll be home around two. Please, drive carefully. Oh, I still feel uneasy with that child in this house. Well, he's troubled, and it's understandable. After all he's been through. But... Uh, Really, Mrs. Carpenter, I hardly think he's dangerous. Well, Mrs. Nathanson, we won't be late. That's all right. Enjoy yourselves. Heaven knows you deserve it. I wouldn't even go to this dinner dance at all with Rodney here, but as president of the club, I have to be there. Uh, you know the club number if you need us. Of course. But nothing's going to happen. If Rodney does come down, maybe he'd like a game of checkers. Don't have to talk to play that. Let's go, Joan. Well, goodbye. And relax. Everything's going to be all right here. Oh, help yourself to anything in the refrigerator. Uh, there's a fresh cream pie and coffee's in the pot. Oh, thank you. Have fun. <laughs> That pie does look... Oh, oh you startled me. You... You're Rodney. Well, I, I... I'm glad to meet you at last. I'm Mrs. Nathanson. You're just in time for some delicious cream pie. Uh, you, you don't want any. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought all 12-year-old boys had an empty pit. I... I I wish you, you wouldn't stare at me like that. You're, you're going to, you're going to write something? Oh, uh, good. Uh, let's see. Uh, do I like butterflies? Oh, why, yes. I think they're very beautiful. Uh, oh, a another note. Would I like to see your collection? Oh, I'd love to, Rodney. How many do you have? Oh, it's upstairs. Okay. <laughs> Lead the way. So this is your room, Rodney. It's very nice. Oh, but it's my so hot and stuffy. Oh, dear me, let's open a window. It, it's midsummer and you have all the windows closed. There. That's better. Now, ah, let's see your butterflies. Well, aren't you going to show me your collection? Rodney, why are you staring like that? Rodney, don't come any closer to me. I don't like it. Rodney, what's the matter with you? As I said at the start of our excursion into the macabre, babysitting can be an experience of chilling proportions. Rodney is indeed a handful, and he still has two more days to spend with the carpenters. Frankly, I'd take him over my knee and give him what he deserves. We'll find out what else Rodney is up to when I return shortly with Act Three.
the Carpenter household, once so quiet and serene, hasn't been the same since Rodney arrived. The Carpenters expected that the routine of their lives would change when they agreed to take care of the child for a week, but never in their wildest dreams did they imagine just how drastic the change would be. At the moment, they're trying to enjoy the dinner dance at the club without much success. Edgar, c can't we leave? I'll only be another hour. What's going to happen? I don't know. I, I just would feel better if we were back home. I call if it'll make you feel better. Talk to Mrs. Nathanson. I think I will. But do you think I should well, warn her? Now, don't scare the poor woman. Rodney's certainly not going to threaten her. I'll be back in a minute. Uh, who's this? Well, who's this? Oh, excuse me. I, I must have the wrong number. Now, wait a minute, ma'am. Who, who did you want? The Carpenter residence. Uh, Mrs. Nathanson. Who are you? I have to know who you are, ma'am. Well, I'm Mrs. Carpenter. Mrs. Nathanson is babysitting for me. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm police, Mrs. Carpenter. Police? Officer Dugan. What is it? Good Lord, what's happened? An accident, Mrs. Carpenter. Can you come right away? Yes, 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 right away. I can't believe it. Mrs. Nathanson. A neighbor out for a walk saw the body lying next to the house. We, we think she fell from the upper window. Rodney's room. We haven't been able to get a word out of the boy. I'm glad you're here. If only we'd stayed home. The boy doesn't talk, officer. Doesn't talk? He's your son? No, 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 no. He's he's my brother's ward, temporarily. We're taking care of him for a week. Well, you think we can get anything out of him? We'll try, but he's a strange kid. We'll need a pad and a pencil. Oh, I've got it right here. Ronnie, you've got to answer some questions. What happened to Mrs. Nathanson? He's shaking his head no. Yes, you do know, Rodney. You were here with Mrs. Nathanson. She was found on the ground outside your bedroom window. Now, what happened? Answer me. Yeah, the kid's frightened, and it's getting late. Uh, put him to bed. We'll try to talk to him in the morning. Okay, okay. Go to bed, Rodney. I'll take him up. Well, there'll, there'll be an autopsy. It'll probably show she died of injuries from the fall. I... I hope that kid can tell us what happened. Ed. Mm. Ed, mm. wake what? up. Huh? What is, what's the matter? Ed Rodney's just gone downstairs. What time is it? Uh, four o'clock. Well, I'll get up and see what the kid's up to. Rodney! I'll come with you. Rodney, where are you? He can't answer. We'll have to find him. I don't trust that kid wandering around the house. You know, he's liable to come at us with a butcher's knife. Ed. Oh, the front door. He went out. Turn on the light. Why would he be going outside? Rodney! Get in here. Can you see him? No. He might be running away. Huh. We should be so lucky. Uh, Ronnie, we know you're out here. Now, come on in. Right now. I don't like this. I I'm getting frightened. You go in. You're cold. Uh, I'll find him. I, I, I don't want to be alone. She could be hiding anywhere. You... Shrubs or... Front door. The little devil tricked us. He doubled back inside. Come on. What's he trying to do to us? Rodney! Rodney, come here. Right here, right now. Oh, this is giving me the willies. He's deliberately trying to bait us. I'm not going back to bed until I know where he is. Well, we know he's in the house. Do we? And we heard the front door slam when we were outside. That's all we heard. How do we know he actually came in? 
Well, when you put it that way, how do we know he actually went out? Why is he doing this? Because he's a malicious brat. That's why we're not playing into his hands anymore. It's ridiculous to be terrorized by a twelve-year-old. I keep thinking about Mrs. Nathanson. Oh, this whole night's been one horror. Well, Rodney knows damn well what happened, but how do we get it out of him? But what can we do? We're going back upstairs. I couldn't sleep if my life depended on it. Yeah, well, it won't. <laughs> I don't know what he's up to, but there's nothing he can do to us. Look, I'm I'm not looking for him anymore. Oh, it's starting to get light. Might as well get dressed. The police will be back later this morning. And if Rodney's not here, I don't give a damn. Ed. His door's closed. There's no way it could be. He... He's in bed. Hello? Ed, it's George. How's it going? Huh, you should ask. Where are you? New York. Flew in last night. Brought a visitor from England back with us. Listen, how'd you get along with Rodney? Why didn't you tell me he was a little fiend? What do you mean? Well, he never said a word the whole week. Oh, I know, I know. He writes notes to us, too. That's only half of it. Well, anything happened to you? Yeah, we had a tragedy. Our neighbor was sitting with Rodney when, uh, when we went to the club. She fell out the bedroom window. What? And our cat died. Sylvester? Hey, you have had a week. Yeah, and it all happened with Rodney here. I can't get into it now, George, but the the minute he gets off that plane, find some place else for him. Ed, what's the matter with I'm you? I'm telling you, the minute he gets off that plane, take him to some welfare agency or whatever. Sure, Ed, sure. You put him on the plane tomorrow. It's flight 704. With the greatest pleasure. Okay. I'll meet him at this end. You're welcome to him. I'm sorry you think he caused you so much trouble. Anyway... I appreciate you taking care of him. I owe you one, Ed. Forget it. I'm trying to. Okay. I'll meet him at Kennedy tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, George. Bye. Oh. Rodney. I didn't hear you. You're going back tomorrow. You want to know something, kid? I still think you pushed Mrs. Nathanson out the window. And I still think you had something to do with the cat. No response, huh? I can't prove it. I wish I could. Come here. Closer. Yeah, June's right. There isn't anything behind those eyes of yours. What are you? Well, I don't mind telling you, kid. I'll be glad to see you off tomorrow. Find Rodney. We've got to leave in ten minutes. No, oh, it's another one of his tricks. Like Thursday night. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get him on that plane. Now maybe he's afraid to go back. Oh, he's not afraid of anything. I'll put his stuff in the car. We'll find him. After all that's happened, I still feel kind of sorry. He seems such a lost little boy. Lost my foot. Oh. Oh. Why, there he is. He's sitting in the car. I never thought of looking there. Good. He's as anxious to get out of here as we are to see him go. Okay, Ronnie, you're on your way. Well, there it goes. Bye, bye, Rodney. <laughs> I had to see that plane in the sky before I'd leave. Now let's go home. That's funny. There's a note on the back seat. I, I didn't see it when we took his stuff out. A note? I can reach it. I can't imagine when he put it there. What's it say? 
Goodbye, it was. Goodbye, it was? Well, he must have meant to finish the sentence like, well, it was nice or, or it was awful. Just goodbye and it was? Yep, that's it. Well, that's the last of them anyway. I wish I knew what he was going to add. You know, maybe he was trying to thank us after all. Hmm, <laughs> bad chance of that. It would have been something sinister, you can bet on that. I'm still sick over Mrs. Nathanson. We have to go to her funeral this afternoon. I know. What the... Ed, you went right through that red light. The brakes are gone. I'm down to the floor. Well, what? I'll try to gear down. Stop, Ed. Stop. Stop. I... That truck's coming right on through. I can't. Ah! I'm glad you could come to the airport with me, Mrs. Parker. Helen hates the trip. Oh, well, I'm here to see New York. I want to see as much as I can. Passengers are coming through the gate now. There, there he is. Hey, Rodney. Over here, Rodney. Oh, rather a pale young lad, isn't he? Well, I feel sorry for him. I hope they find him a good home soon. His parents were killed in a car accident. Oh. He was living with his grandmother until she died from a fall. How tragic. And it's nice of you and your wife to take him in. Rodney, I want you to meet Mrs. Parker. She's from England and she's staying with us for a while. How do you do, Rodney? She'll be sharing your room with you. She, oh, You don't have to be embarrassed. Mrs. Parker has grandchildren older than you. <laughs> Just think of me as a grandmother. I'm sure we'll be good friends. Won't we, Rodney? Oh, I think so, Mrs. Parker. You're going to like Rodney. Well, I certainly don't. I've been thinking over that last curious note Rodney left the Carpenters, Ed and June. Just goodbye, and it was. Too bad they didn't realize in time just before their deaths in that terrible crash. Ed had said he'd get Rodney on the plane if it was the last thing he did. Now we know Rodney's cryptic reply. It was. More about Rodney when I return in just a moment. Who is Rodney? The bad seed? A bad boy who can't help himself? Or perhaps a demon from another time? destined to spend eternity causing identical tragedies wherever he goes. The empty eyes, the extra strength, and that curious mistake of Mrs. Nathanson's sister thinking he was very old. Or was it a mistake? We can only speculate. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Tony Roberts, Bryna Rayburn, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>